yeah, that was a fun weekend. <laughs> Before we get into the destruction and mayhem that went on at Maker Faire, I want to get to a few of the details that we sort of skipped out on on the last video. And then I've got some pretty cool matches to show you. Let's get into it. All right, before we get too much into the damage this thing took over the weekend, I want to give a big shout out to Send Cut Send. Uh, they were nice enough to supply me with all the armor plates to my bot, uh, and these held up really, really well. Some high quality carbon fiber laser cut uh, for a pretty affordable price. Uh, they also cut stainless steel, uh, which would have been nice if we were in a 15 pound category, um, but really, really high quality precision cuts. Uh, as well as G10, uh, this is like a compressed fiberglass, uh, much more affordable than carbon fiber, and you get most of the strength and stiffness out of it too, so uh, good stuff there. All right, first thing you may notice is one of these weapons is no longer attached. A nasty bot called Dropkick managed to shear four M5 bolts straight through the aluminum. Uh, actually, the aluminum held up pretty good, but the bolts themselves sheared, so definitely need some heavier hardware to hold onto this. The other thing you'll notice, it's quite deformed. This thing really got smushed, which tells me two things. A, Dropkick is a nasty, nasty bot, and B, uh, these weren't fully hardened, which I suspected. I think actually the hardening process went okay, but I over annealed them, so they kind of went back to a softer state, which, you know, can help and hurt. They, uh, they probably would have snapped uh, if they were fully hard, but maybe have done more damage to the other bot. Not sure. But yeah, definitely need better hardware on this one. The next thing you may notice is the carbon fiber is all chewed up, and my little sliders on the corners are removed. Uh, if you're really paying attention, you'll notice that these magnets are not the ones I started with. These are shorter, uh, thinner magnets. I was having a real problem sticking to the floor. If the floor was totally flat, it would have been no problem. But because the floor was kind of wavy and they were made of several pieces of steel, every time I'd go over a seam, there was a chance that that magnet would actually come in contact with the steel and then I was stuck. Uh, you'll see that in one of the matches here in a minute. So that's also why I had to remove those sliders, just trying to get as much ground clearance as possible. So there's a lesson learned, um, but it is nicely chewed up. The other thing you'll notice is these nasty gouges on the side here. There were several fights that we'll get into the details on on how this happened, but needless to say, Dropkick was fairly responsible for those too. My very first match uh, with a bot called Yield was also uh, responsible for quite a bit of this damage. Uh, in fact, I had to drill this hole out. This is the safety pin that goes in to stop the weapon from spinning. After I got this hit, that pin wouldn't fit anymore, so that's something I had to fix. You'll also notice that I've got G10 on the top here instead of carbon fiber. I did end up with a little extra weight that I could mess with, and the G10 didn't seem to have as much radio interference problems as the carbon fiber. If you guys know anything about how carbon fiber affects uh, radio waves and signal strength and attenuation, let me know down in the comments because I really don't understand it. One nice thing is this thing does still spin. The uh, bearings themselves held up pretty good. Magnets are a little loose here. All the screws on this thing will eventually come loose. The next bot I build, I'm Loctiting everything. One thing that didn't make it into the last video is this convenient little handle. Uh, I made this the very last minute to help me pull this cover plate off between fights. I realized I wasn't gonna have that much time for repairs and this sped things up quite a bit. Nice. All right, actually the bot looks pretty good inside, about the way I left it. You will notice that the wheels are now blue instead of orange. Uh, Bane bot separates their uh, softness of wheel by color or the durometer of wheel. Uh, the orange ones that were originally in here were the softest. I thought that would give me the most grip on the floor, but it turns out they get chewed up way too fast and it actually loses grip as the rubber kind of rolls over on itself and you lose surface area. So I changed out to the blue ones because that's what I had on hand as a replacement. I think if I were to do it again, I'd get the black ones. Those are the hardest durometer they offer and uh, I think they'll hold up quite a bit better. You'll notice the weapon motor, same deal, swapped out for the blue one. Uh, but this ha actually had a worse problem, you'll notice it no longer contacts the side wall of the ring, so my weapon is totally dead at this point. Uh, I got some great advice from Brian Nave, who runs Captain Shredderator, uh, the 250 pound full body spinner you've probably seen on TV. Uh, and he recommended that I spring load this so that it's always getting pressure on the side of the wheel. And I think that's some great advice. If I ever redo this spinner, I'll probably do that. The other thing you'll notice is I've got a little piece of plastic in here wedged between my weapon ESC and my main shutoff switch. Uh, it turns out in my first fight, this was one of the things that caused the uh, weapon to stop working. 
I got a nasty hit and actually dug into the side of the PCB on here from the on off switch. Didn't short out or anything, uh, but it did for some reason stop the ESC from working. So that's another lesson learned. Uh, these gearboxes, however, uh, one of them did totally stop working. Um, you can see that one's still working fine. This guy, I'm spinning the wheel, and this motor's not spinning at all. On the first stage of this gearbox uh, is actually a set of plastic planetary gears, and they all broke in there. Uh, I did give it some fair bit of punishment before testing it out, and they seem to hold up fine. But in the long run, they're just uh, really not a reliable gearbox, so I probably won't go back to those again either. All right, here's a bit of a closer look where my weapon got ripped off by Dropkick. Uh, you can see I tried to key uh, the weapon in this aluminum so that it was less likely to get sheared off. Uh, there, was a, there was actually a lip here that was supposed to stop that from happening. But it just mushed through that aluminum like it was hot butter. Yeah, definitely either need a higher sidewall here or maybe a harder material around the weapon itself. Yeah, pretty impressive power from those other 12-pound bots. Uh, really impressed with the competition there. All right, you guys are probably tired of me talking away on this thing and want to see some of the action on how this thing got beat up. So without further ado, here's my first match. All right, my first battle is against a bot called Yield, and don't let its wood exterior and 3D printed wheels fool you. This is one tough bot. He made it well into the finals and honestly was probably underestimated by most of the competition. Uh, but it was quite impressive. You can see I started off with problems right away. For some reason, my weapon wasn't spinning right at the beginning. Um, I was going crazy on the controller trying to get it to spin up, uh, and it just wouldn't for the first few seconds. Eventually it did, and I got this one nice hit on yield, uh, but that wood exterior just took the hit no problem. He eventually got a few more really solid hits and did manage to disable my weapon. He actually dislodged the bearing race on the inside of the bearing. Uh, the bearing wasn't damaged itself, but the race being dislodged kind of stopped it from moving. And then I got stuck on the floor and was out. So kudos to Yield, excellent fight. All right, my next opponent was a robot called Insubordination. Now normally this is a really nasty robot as well, but long story short, they ended up in that fight without a primary weapon. Uh, to level the playing field a little bit, I went with my secondary weapon, uh, and this was a good first try of that chipping action to see how well it did. And to be honest, as cool as it was in theory, it really didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Uh, you'll see in this video, it looks sort of like I'm just bouncing off of them, not creating a whole lot of damage. Uh, if you look closely in the robot, you do see I pull off quite a lot of material, but it wasn't enough to really do any catastrophic damage or any sort of knockout damage. The other problem is that those tiny little teeth were just getting clogged up instantly. Uh, you know, the first time I went up against their wheel or a piece of plastic, you know, the whole bot on the outside was pretty much smooth. So uh, I don't think I'll ever go back to that weapon design again. It was a cool experiment though. I did end up winning that fight. You know, they didn't have a primary weapon and even then it still came down to the last 10 seconds. So um, yeah, just didn't go the way I wanted it to either, but I was grateful to have a win and to keep fighting. All right, my last fight was against Dropkick. Now this is one nasty bot. He went quite far into the competition as well. Uh, that thing, that vertical spinner just has a ton of energy and packs a pretty mean punch. Uh, but this was probably one of my better fights. Uh, I went back to this weapon, got it up to as fast as I could. You'll see in several points, I'm just wobbling all over the place. That's because each one of these weapons are at a different height. They are balanced radially, but if I get any sort of perturbation in the rotation, it just starts to wobble like crazy. Uh, so I really couldn't get it up to full speed. Despite that, I think I did some pretty good driving, got around to his wheel several times, and, uh, and did a fair bit of damage before he finally just knocked me out. He, uh, we had one weapon-on-weapon -weapon contact. Parts went flying for both bots, but uh, one of those parts was this weapon, and I was pretty much done after that. Uh, without this weight on one side, it was terribly imbalanced. I couldn't get up to speed, and he eventually knocked me out, which I didn't mind. Honestly, that's the way I wanted to go out, in blaze of glory, uh, and was really happy with that. Uh, you know, that was probably the most exciting fight of the week for me, and uh, can't wait for the next one. And as a little bonus footage, uh, I got to do a quick interview with Will Bales from Hypershock. I apologize for the audio. It was pretty loud in that environment, uh, and I really didn't have time to set up some good audio equipment. But he was nice enough to sit down with me for a second and talk about the bot. So take a listen. All right, Will Bales, Hypershock. This thing is badass. <laughs> you can take off the cover for it. Absolutely. 
Look at these brushless motors. They're massive. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah can I see the other one? This yeah. thing is like, I don't know if you can get a sense of scale. Here's we prepared earlier. Exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah, so the way we did the drivetrain is we have modular you know, drive modules. So it's the motor, it's a controller, it's a receiver, it's the encoder, the whole thing. So when you get it, when you have something break, you just swap yeah, out the whole out, assembly. Yeah, take it out, swap it back in. It's really easy. It takes two tools. One to actually take it out, and another to do you have any advice for a first time uh, builder? Just build it. Uh, just, well, just go to an event. Yeah. <laughs> figure out how great it is. Build a robot great. Just get to an event, figure out what breaks, and you'll learn from there as well. Well, thank you very much, Nelson. Appreciate it. Yeah, that thing's nuts. All right, here's a little B-roll, just uh, random footage that I took during the day. Uh, tons of the uh, big 250-pound bots showed up. Uh, you know, if you're a fan of BattleBots, you'll absolutely love it. Uh, there's just you know, tons of the guys you see on TV walking around, all of which are super nice, uh, really welcoming community. And if you're interested in supporting events like this and you weren't able to go to Maker Faire, I'll leave a few links down in the description where you can donate a little bit of money. I love supporting organizations that really donate their time and money and effort into events like this. So check out those links in the description. And I have to thank all my family and friends that came out and watched me and you guys as well. Really appreciate the support. Uh, and thanks to Jake and Clay for helping me out in the pits. That was huge. And James for all the spare parts. And of course, Ryan for running the entire Physics Anonymous booth while I was out battling bots. So thank you. It really means a lot. All right, I think that should wrap this video up nicely. And for those of you that are worried that this will be the last in the BattleBot series on this channel, fear not, I'm sure we have plenty more bots to make. And before you ask, this is probably the last time I'll work on this robot. As much as I love it, I think it's destined to be a wall ornament at this point. So I just have too many ideas floating around in my head of other things to build. So subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for that. We'll see you on the next one.